Hello, today I am going to show you how to make an apron sink or countryside sink. The measurement is based on an actual life-size apron sink. So this type of sink is much bigger and deeper than the standard kitchen sink. But the kitchen counter is much smaller here, so if you want to make it bigger, then you can adjust the length to the size you want. Check the description box for the measurements and materials. Here are the materials that you need for the sink. Before I will glue them together, I am going to add a detail on the front of the sink. This is of course optional. I am going to add detail on the longer rectangular part, so only one side. And I simply added some lines on the foam board using a ball stylus. I pushed the ball stylus a little bit harder to create the dents. And here you can see the horizontal line that I made. And I also added the shorter vertical lines. To assemble the sink, glue all the parts together. If you haven't glued the sides yet, make the drain hole. I already glued some of the part and realized that the bottom doesn't have any drain. So luckily I haven't glued everything so I still have space to make the hole. Next, I painted the sink with a cream color enamel paint and set it aside to dry. Now take the back piece and find the center of it. It should be 75 millimeters, and then mark the center. Then take the sink and find the center and mark it too. Then, I simply aligned the two markings and traced the sink so I would know where to put the dividers later. Next, take the top piece and again find and mark the center. Again, align the markings from the sink and the top piece. Then, I move the sink 3 millimeters forward away from the edge of the top piece before I traced it, so that the front of the sink will be exposed. Then, from the uh, traced lines, I marked another 3 millimeters on each side to make an inner line. Using a sharp blade, cut and remove the excess wood following the inner line. The reason for that is to let the top cover sit on top of the edge of the sink. So it should look something like this. Next, glue the top piece and the back piece together. The top piece should be sitting on top of the back piece. Then take the two divider pieces and glue them in place. Use the lines you made earlier as a guide. Keep on checking if the sink still fits so that you can make any necessary adjustments before the glue dries. Next, mark the inner divider 15 millimeters from the edge of the divider. This will be our guide when we glue the drawer floor. I'm not going to make a deep drawer so I will add a stopper on the floor so that the drawer will not go all the way back. I marked it 30 millimeters since this is how deep my drawer will be. Then I glued a small piece of craft wood. Do this on both sides of the drawer.
Like my other projects, I will prime and paint some of the parts that needs to be painted before I glue the other pieces. Here, I will paint the top with wood varnish and then the inner part and the drawer floor will be primed with white paint. Now you can glue the drawer floor on both sides. Remember the lines you made earlier? Glue the drawer floor just below the line. Next, take both side pieces and glue them on the sides of the counter. Then set the semi-assembled piece aside. For the drawers, simply glue all the pieces together. Now I would suggest that you measure the drawers again and not rely on the measurements I have because sometimes it might not fit or you might need to make small or big adjustments. I made a lot of sandings on the right drawer because I didn't measure it before gluing and somehow it didn't fit. Next, take the 60mm long wood strip and mark where you want to put the hinges of the doors. Then, drill the holes in it and set it aside for painting. Next, paint all the materials that you haven't glued. This includes all the wood pieces and the moldings. Then, set them aside to dry. When the paint is dry, you can glue the moldings to the doors and drawers. And here's how they look like. Then set them aside. To make the drain, I used an embossing metal sheet which I cut using a pair of scissors. Then using a big needle, I poke some holes in it. Then, I applied some glue and covered the hole with it. For the drain pipe, I used bendable drinking straw. Here, I used two bendable straw to make the curves of the pipe. Then, I painted the straw with black enamel paint. I also painted another straw just in case I would need it. Next, take the two side doors. Again, the side doors are non-functional so you won't be able to open it. But you always have the option to make it functional. So here I just um, glue them to their respective places. Next, apply glue to the sink and attach it to the counter. Remember to move the sink 3 mm forward so that the front is exposed. Make adjustments before the glue dries. Measure how long you need the pipe to be and cut the excess straw. Then, apply glue and attach it to the drain. Take the 60 mm long wood strip and glue it below the sink. Make sure that the holes are facing down. Next, mark the door so that it is in line with the holes you drilled. Then, use this as a guide to place the hemming pin. Then, cut the excess wire. Next, insert the pin to the hole and push the door upward. Next, add the floor and let the glue dry. After that, you can add the lower hinges. And before cutting the excess wire, test if the door opens or closes properly. In order for the doors to not go all the way back when closing, I am going to add this piece of craft wood a few millimeters back to form as a stopper. Then next, I glued the door handles in place. 
Next, I added the foot which I also painted the same color as the top piece. And lastly, I glue this store-bought plastic faucet. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button and get notified for new videos. Bye-bye and see you next Saturday.